So once, once the potential authors um, receive that notification, what they would do is they would obviously follow the link itself and find themselves on the journal, right? Uh, so there will be a direct link going to the journal of uh, nursing sciences, like this. Now, now currently, um, I see that you haven't really, I don't know if you've added, okay, there's a bit of text there, which is good. Um, so currently, what authors would do is, if they go on submissions, they, they have two options, right? If they, were, if they already have an account registered with the journal, then they'll just log in. If on the other hand, they have not yet registered with the journal, then they'll be prompted to register an account so that they make a submission. Okay, so two things. And, and ideally, if you want, um, you, can, you can maybe include instructions in your call for papers to say, uh, before you submit an article, you want to make sure that you um, you register an account or something like that, okay? Um, and I think at, at this point, depending on what sort of permissions you've been you've been given, maybe we can simulate this. Uh, so maybe each one of us can attempt to um, make a submission because if you have the appropriate if you have the appropriate uh, permissions in the backend itself, you can just go to submissions. Um, if you have a different account, you can simulate maybe creating a new account, but, but, but I would like to suggest that we use our same accounts because it would take time here. So what you do is if you want to create a, an account using maybe a personal email address, for instance, is you click on register. Um, oh, and it looks like the configuration hasn't yet been done in such a way that it ac accepts uh, registrations, Mr. Msenge, by the way. I don't know if you've noticed this. Uh, just quickly, I'm just going to change... Um, the the configurations here i'll just go to workflow uh, under submissions i will say uh, or is it under website maybe i think it is uh, there's a flag that needs to be changed here you need to explicitly specify that um, that uh, you'll be accepting uh, registrations from users. Uh, let's see here. I think it should be a website, maybe. Uh, let's see, let's see here. I know there's supposed to be a configuration which is meant to, maybe under information or something. It's, it's supposed to enable people to actually register. Um, maybe site access options or something. Yeah, so this is it. So you go under users and the site access options. This is a once-off configuration. I'll just tick this. Say... Uh, visitors can can register because you won't keep up right if you if you if you leave it here where the journal manager registers user accounts every time somebody wants to submit uh, an article you'd have to manually register them like what mr msing was doing for my account so i'll save this and then if i go to the back end here and again go on submissions and click on register you notice that there's a form that comes up so a new user would come here and then they would register their names here uh, I mean, their details. So first name, you know, middle name, if they have one, last name, or the affiliation, their country, and then their preferred username and the email address. And then they would, they would register an account. After which, once they register an account, they would come back to submissions, and then they would say login, because you can, you can only submit uh, an article once you have a, a valid registered account. Okay? Okay. Um, Um, and then you log in. So when you log in, you'd see something like this. So 
Um, using your current account, it's fine. You click on submissions, and what we're going to do as, as one of the very first things during the submission workflow is we're going to simulate what a user would do when they're submitting an article, okay? Uh, I'm not sure if people have some, some sample document that, that can be used. I mean, it's not going to be publicly accessible, so it can be any document. If you have an article lying around on your computer, you can do that. You click on submissions, and then for you to submit a new article, you click on new submission, okay? Now, you will notice that when you're submitting an article, right, it's, so the, the, you're going through what's called the submission workflow. The submission workflow is part of those four workflows that I mentioned, right? If you were paying attention, these things here. Um, these things here, submission, review, copy edit, editing, and production. But within the submission stage itself, there's a workflow that you go through, okay? So within the submission stage, there's a workflow. You notice here it's a five-stage workflow. So a potential author will, will start off by, you know, responding to this form here, right? You go to start and then they'll upload the submission. They will enter the descriptive information about the article. They'll confirm the submission and then they are done, right? You confirm the submission and then that article will be submitted and the, the the, the, the journal editors will be able to see the article. So I'll ask that we go to submissions, right? And then you click on new submission. Under new submission, what you do is by default, I believe this is how the, the journal has been configured, the nursing journal has been configured, the journal of research in nursing, midwifery and, um, and health or something. You want to tick all of these different options here. So we are simulating what uh, a potential author would be doing. In other words, you are prompting them to, to indicate that a the article they are submitting has not been submitted el has not been submitted elsewhere. Um, I don't know if this is your preferred configuration, but you are wanting them to specify that the submission in, is in a prescribed format, so it's in Open Office format, Microsoft Word, or Rich Text file. Um, what I have noticed for journals like Jobs, I believe, is they require that this submission be in Word or something, just so .doc or .docx. Now, it's not uncommon for other journals to specify, to say, we just want these submissions to be in, in PDF. The choice is up to you. Um, if you decide to, to specify a format, then we would have to reconfigure the site itself. Um, I don't know if this is something you've already dis discussed here, but by the way, we can have a back and forth if you have questions. That's not a problem. Um, and then this other checklist here is the author has to indicate to say um, the references of corresponding URLs or DOIs or something. Again, if this is not a requirement, this can easily be changed. It's, 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 it's not a problem. I don't know if you notice this, but in the in the configuration itself, when you go under, is it? I think it's workflow. I'll leave this. If you go under workflow, and then you go under submission, there are these configurations here. These would have been set up with by Mr. Msing, I suppose, with Manasseh. If not, then these are default uh, options. So you notice that you can delete or edit these things. So if let's say we wanted to accept only PDF. We could say, we change this to, the submission file is in PDF document uh, format. When we save this, again, this is a once-off thing. When a user is submitting a new article and they go on new submission, that checklist will only have PDF available, if you notice this. So, so these things that a an author is going to see on the very first page of the submission workflow are things that you, as an editorial team, would have to agree upon. These are usually discipline specific. In some instances, they are, uh, they are probably, they, they could be like journals, they could be specific to the journal itself. Um, so I, I don't know, right? 
the same applies to conditions like this. The text is, in, is single spaced and uses a 12 point font. So if the, the journal of, uh, of, of research in nursing, for instance, will require that um, authors use double spacing or one and a half spacing, then this would have to be changed. If this is not applicable, it can be deleted. What's important is that what you are seeing here is aligned with, um, I guess, the house styles associated with your journal itself. But for now, um, if there are no thoughts about this, uh, maybe we can proceed to the next stage so that we make progress. If you feel the things that are currently appearing here are not representative of your journal, maybe somebody will be taking notes so that um, at the end of this, we can approach Manasseh or myself together with Mr. Msengi can make the necessary alterations here. Uh, it's not uncommon for you perhaps to explicitly specify to say, well, the text is single-spaced and uses 12-point times new Roman font. So in that particular case, you are, you are forcing the authors to say, we want you to use Times New Roman or Area or something. I don't know. Anyways, um, and then in some instances, the author may have maybe a, a, a comment that they would want to, 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 to pass on to the journal editor. This is why you have this text field here. For now, we'll just leave it uh, blank. And then we can say, you know, save and continue. Once we do this, we move on to the next stage. Again, this would be the author, right? So the author would move on to the next stage. And notice that in the next stage, the author is automatically prompted to upload the file itself. Again, you notice that the second stage has another sub workflow. And in that sub workflow, one of the very first things that the author is prompted to do is they have to specify what they are uploading. Are they uploading an article text? Are they uploading research instruments? Are they uploading a data set? Are they uploading, uh, could be a um, transcript of an interview or something? Are they uploading, um, is it uh, research results? Now, an important point to note is that what the authors see here is determined by the journal itself. So again, the person who has been tasked to you know, uh, manage the journal or to configure the journal, I imagine it's Mr. I'm saying, I don't know if there's another colleague who is doing this, would have to change these things. Again, these things are discipline specific. I can give my example, I'll give an example in computing. Uh, these days, there are certain venues that will require that you just don't upload an article, but a corresponding data set that was used, right, to publish that article as well. If, if there are other things that are specific to nursing that you would want authors to optionally upload, you would have to change these things. Um, for now, if there are no comments, we can just choose article text. And then once you choose article text, you will notice that there's an option here where you can upload a file. What the author would be uploading here is the actual file um, that they would want to submit for review. This is probably straightforward. So you click on upload. And for now, I'll just ask that you maybe just uh, upload any document that you have. Um, again, what you'll notice is that you can either drag and drop or you can upload, but clicking the upload button is fine. You click on next. When you click on next, you'll get to the second stage of the upload submission file workflow. Remember, we are within the submission stage. Within the submission stage, I think we are on, uh, is it stage number two? Within that stage number two, we are going through these three workflows. So the second stage is you just review the details to confirm that what you have upload, uploaded is, is indeed what you wanted to upload. So this would be the author. Right? Sometimes you accidentally you know, upload the wrong file name, and, uh, 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 in which case you'd, you know, um, you'd easily edit this if you wanted to, okay? Um, if, you're, if you're okay with this, 
you can then you know click on continue on on the third stage of this upload submission submission file workflow is where you confirm whether you would want to add another file or you want to complete the submission you typically add another file in instances where maybe you're not only submitting the actual article which needs to be reviewed but maybe a data set um or it could be maybe the research instrument right some supplementary material as it as it is commonly called for now we'll assume it's just the article we'll say complete submission um i'm just gonna maybe pause here and just ask if uh, everybody is with me if this is making sense or if there are thoughts or concerns about this it is actually making sense dr but i'm not so sure with the uh, the other colleagues okay and just to mention that you see it's important that in as much as so the vast majority of people that are part of the editorial team will rarely be involved with this i mean i know i mean within the editorial team you may decide to submit articles to the journal itself for review but in most instances your role will be to uh, to 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 process submitted articles right so look for reviewers and you know handle anything to do with copy editing and, and production in addition though there may be queries where a user fails to submit an article and if you decide within a journal that you can you can actually manually help them to do this you would have to do this on their behalf so you have to log in and manually upload that article on, on the uh, uh on, on behalf of the potential author we do this a lot in the journal of law and uh although instances of, of us doing doing that have actually reduced of late um but we sometimes uh, upload articles on behalf of the authors if they're having challenges 